I'm not going to yell today or try to teach in my normal way because I don't want to do any damage. But I am going to give you this word. So stand on your feet. This is my Bible. God's word to me. Lift it up. And I believe what it says. Who it says I am, that's who I am. And it says that I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And I believe what it says. This is my Bible. God's immutable word to me. His supernatural word. His word is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I believe what it says. And what it says I can do. I can do it. And it says that I can do all things through Christ Jesus. That strengthens me. And I believe what it says. So today, I'm ready to hear from the word of God for faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God I will believe it in my heart for with my heart I must believe and where I have need of change I am ready and willing to be changed by the living breathing immutable supernatural word of almighty God and I'll never be the same again after I've heard believed received and applied the word of God to my life how many of you believe that let me tell you something that most of our faith lacks now we've talked about building your faith muscle. We talked about the inconvenience of faith. We've talked about when our faith fails, when our faith shrinks. But I want to talk about a missing component of faith. Now this missing component is more powerful than prayer. It's more powerful than the Bible. Are you ready? What is missing from faith? Why doesn't my faith consistently work? I believe God, I believe the word. But why doesn't my faith consistently work? What am I missing? I want you to write this word down. Take out your pen. Take out your pad. And I want you to write this word down. And I never want you to forget this word when it comes to your faith. Say, I'll never forget this word when it comes to my faith because this word is the missing component of consistent faith in action I will never forget this word this word will save my life this word will save my faith this word will save my testimony are you ready for this word write it down the first letter is A the second letter is C. The third letter is T. The fourth letter is I. The fifth letter is O. And the last letter is N. Will we ever believe your faith? 
if we never see your action. I believe God for a job, but you never apply. You never go look for one. I believe God for more money, for more resources, but you never invest in a quality education or skill set or trade. You want to make more money, but you don't want to increase your knowledge. You don't want to increase your skill. You just want more money. I want to get married, but you don't go nowhere. I believe in God for a husband. I believe in God for a wife. But you don't go on no date. You don't engage someone of the opposite sex because we ain't playing the other stuff. You don't engage someone of the opposite sex. <clears throat> you don't go out, you don't like people, you don't speak to men, you don't flirt with women, y'all ain't saying nothing. You go out with your, your sleeping cap on and your pajamas looking like you stink. You don't look like you attractive your grill is all tore up you ain't believe in God there's no action I want a new house but, but you won't fix your credit I want to I, I believe in God to send me a new a car or a, a better job but here's what's missing A C T I O N the reading of the scripture this morning said faith without works is ludicrous you may be seated Bold prayers, bold faith, bold actions. How many of you prayed bold prayers last week? All right. You got some bold prayers out there? Good. This week I'm going to show you how to get answers to bold prayers. Because just praying bold prayers doesn't get you answers. You got to put the work in. Why does it get quiet right there? You got to put the work in. My sister said a few weeks ago, and this is probably what triggered this series. She said, one of the things that I know about my sister is her faith. Now, she doesn't know my faith because I talk about it. You got to be about it. Faith is not only a noun, but faith is a verb. There is a movement, an action to the noun of your faith. How did Jesus know that the leper had faith? The Bible says he saw it. The Bible says that while he was standing there teaching, the roof of the house came off. Every incident and every scripture that we have read in these five weeks 
there has been some type of corresponding action. Write that down. Corresponding action. Folks, I want to get you out of poverty. I want to get you out of sickness and disease. I want to get you out of the stalemate that you're in with your faith. I want to get you moving and birthing and dreaming again. But you have to understand that there will be, there must be, there's got to be some corresponding action to your faith. Whatever you believe in God for, there is always a corresponding action. Okay, nobody said nothing. Okay, am I in the right place? I have an issue of blood. And I've had it for 12 years. I've gone to the doctors. I've used all of my money. Actions. I went to the doctors. I spent all my money. Now I got to upgrade my action. So come on now because I don't just want to be healed. I want to be made whole. Because now I'm broke. When I started with the disease, I had money. When I started with the illness, I had favor with the doctors. But now I'm out of money and I'm out of doctors. So I pray a bold prayer. I want to be whole. How will I get whole? If I can touch the hem of his garment, that means I got to get up with my bloody self and I got to make my way through the crowd. I've got to endure the afflictions of the hum humiliation of leaving a bloody trail and an odor in the midst of the people. I've got to take being talked about. I've got to take being rejected. I've got to endure the lies because I want to be whole. A bold prayer is I want to be whole. A regular prayer is I want to be healed. I don't just want to be healed. I want to be whole. So she presses her way through the crowd. She touches him with her faith. And virtue comes out of Jesus. And her faith made her whole. Do you want your faith to make you whole? This morning as I was pressing my way, my daughter said, Ma, you know you don't have to come. I said, no, I got to come. See, faith to be healed means I don't lay in the bed. I got to put the work in. I got to put the work in. I got I to gotta do everything I normally do because I want to be well. I want to be whole. I want to be out of this. So I cannot be at home believing God. I'm preaching good. Ain't, ain't nobody liking me. Come on. Hey, hold on. I, I can't be at home believing God, anointing myself with oil and drinking tea. And he saw their faith. And when he saw their faith, 
he said, you are healed and your sins are forgiven. How does your faith look? Well, it's in my heart. <laughs> That's a melody of love divine. That's a song. But your faith, James says that if you say you have faith, then there must be action. Bold prayers. Bold actions. Somebody say that with me. Bold prayers. Bold actions. James says, what does it profit, my brethren, if a man says that he hath faith and hath not works? Works that go along with what you say you're believing for. I believe God to be elected or re-elected in November. But here's what it here's what we say out in the in the campaign streets. You gotta run for office. Y'all, y'all. You miss what I just said. You, you don't just put your name on the ballot. You gotta run for office. What does that mean? That means money. That means time. That means borrowing people, volunteers. That, that, that means going on Facebook, investing. That means going to meetings and talking. That means fundraisers. That means connecting with people. That means going for interviews to see whether or not you can get endorsements. That means everything in your life right now is upside down for the next eight weeks because your name is on the ballot. That was your faith. But I don't want my name on the ballot. I want my seat back. Y'all ain't like saying nothing. I, I don't want just my name on the ballot. That took faith. That took uh, $100 to go down and put your name on the ballot. Or you can get your petition signed. But either way, there was action. Then they send it back and say, is your name right? Yes. You have this right? Yes. Okay. So my name's on the ballot. But that ain't winning the election. Y'all not saying nothing here. See, we, we want faith, but we don't want works. We want faith, but we want to believe God and nothing changes. Nothing gets uprooted in our life. Nothing, there's no, there's no interruption to your life because of your faith and what you believe in God for. You want everything to stay normal. I was in class the other morning. Thank God for Zoom. Baby, I can't tell you what all he said. Because I, I was sending out emails. I was answering mail. I had to learn to multitask. I can't just sit in class and be totally focused. Because I've only got six weeks to run for election. You run for your office. There's a run for the office. There's a run. Whatever votes you get, you got to run and get those votes. It's not enough to say I put my name on the ballot. You have to run for office. You got to get people that will run with you. You got to get people, even the dog, you got to get the cats. You got to get the grandbabies. You got to get everybody because what? Faith has to be seen. You go to school, but you never graduate. You 
you're just taking classes. But your, your faith requires a corresponding action. You got to do homework. You got to read. You got to write those papers. You got to turn those papers in and submit them before 1159. You don't get degrees just paying for class. You don't get a degree just showing up for class. You got to do the work. Say, I got to do the work. My faith is nothing without action. Let's read what James says again. James says, for you say you have works or you have well, Paul and, now listen, Paul and James are fighting. Paul and James are debating between themselves. Paul says you need faith to obtain righteousness. James says without works, your faith is dead. So that's the background to the scripture in James. James and Apostle Paul, they are going back and forth because Paul says that it is by faith that you have obtained your righteousness. James gets the letter and responds back to Paul's letter and says, that's good. But without works, your faith is dead. So that's the debate going on between these two apostles. And both are right. We have obtained righteousness by faith. But James says the righteousness that you have obtained by faith should demand you do something. You are righteous by believing God. But what has it produced? can't just keep getting up talking about I'm saved, sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost and that with a mighty burning fire. I'm on my way to heaven and see what the end is going to be. And those of you that know the works of prayer, pray my, my strength in the Lord. You don't never win a soul. You never get anybody healed. You never invite anybody to church. You never lead anybody to Christ. You never get anyone baptized in the Holy Spirit. Okay, so what has your faith produced? Did y'all turn the mic off? What did your faith produce? So you are righteous, but you have led nobody to Christ. You have led no one into the kingdom of God. You enjoy coming to church, but your faith never speaks louder than the one person in your car, which is you. See, we, we, we got this thing a little messed up where we think that long as I'm saved, that I'm good. But James says it's good that you're saved, but your faith without works is basically dead. Okay, see how quiet it got? Somebody say bold prayers, bold actions. Say it again, say bold prayers, bold actions. Is it true that the Father desires to give us the kingdom? Yes, it's true. But you have to seek first the kingdom. It is the Father's good pleasure for you to be given the kingdom. But you have to knock. You have to seek. You have to ask. You have to inquire. There's nothing in the Bible that's not true that God has promised. But the reality is, is that many of us never experience it because we only read it. We don't put any action with it. Monday through Friday, 7 a.m., The Lord said, I want you to do Pentecost in a pandemic. I said, okay, I'm thinking six, six weeks, 
six months at the most. We're heading into the third year. Okay. Don't think that it's odd that I'm on. Don't think that it's strange. Don't think I'm special. I'm just putting the works to my faith. How does it look? It looks like a weekly broadcast with thousands of people on it. You can see my faith. My faith is not, I'm telling you what he told me. I'm doing what he says. And how, how long, Lord, till I tell you to stop? Now, I never thought that it would require the work. 4.30 in the morning, Monday through Friday, because I refuse to get on without looking like I woke up and prepared and planned to do it. How many of you have seen those broadcasts out there where the wig is half on and the lips is dry and no makeup, no blush, no nothing? Come on, somebody, y'all ain't saying nothing. And they look like they just threw on a little something and, and washed, wiped their face, but there was no preparation. I'm not mad at nobody. I'm just saying that's not what God said for me. Now, if I'm going to do it, I can't start it and not finish it. I got to add to my faith some good works. I got to add to my faith some other things. I got to add to my faith going to bed at night. I got to add to my faith, missing my broadcast and missing my programs. I can't watch all the movies at night. I can't stay up past 10, not and get up at 430. So I never thought that it would require all of that. I got to have different outfits. I got to create a look and a brand. Y'all not saying nothing to me. So now I got to make an investment. And now I got to invest in a monthly program that can stream it. Because now Facebook then got funny about live broadcasts. They want you to go through a streaming service. So now you got to invest in that. Now you got a lot of information. But you continually need to read. So you got to buy new books. Now you got to read more books on top of school. Now you got to create lesson plans. Now you got, y'all ain't saying nothing. For one hour, just for one hour, it takes four hours of preparation. For one hour, it takes four hours of preparation. Now, how long, Lord, until I tell you to stop? Oh, God. Okay, now you got to find your look. So now you got to invest. You like those glasses? All right, good. They're not free. No sponsors, nobody underwriting it. So my faith is seen every morning. I know that you hear the word and you're learning about Holy Spirit, but that's not what he sees. He sees my faith. Can I see your faith? Do I see your faith? And what all I ask you to do is share it on your page. All I ask you to do is like and share. All I ask you to do is go to YouTube and subscribe. And most people won't even do that. For one dollar a day, you get seminary lessons in pneumatology. And most won't even do that. Because we, we love consuming. But when he sees our faith, miracles happen. When he sees our faith, how does he see our faith? James says he sees your faith through corresponding actions. Hello, somebody. I was just talking to the banker the other day, and I called him. I said, I've sent you every paper that I could find, every document that you've asked me for. I don't have any more documents to submit. 
We've extended this thing twice. You either are or you're not. Because I've submitted every document from the IRS to the post office to everything because the bank says you want us to loan you money. But we need to see proof of your income. And under the last administration, Mr. Trump changed the tax laws. You all would not know that. Because most of you get a W-2. But for the majority of us who are self-employed, or we are business owners, we get 1099s. And so now Trump has changed all of the bank laws. All of the lending laws were changed while we slept. Because we slept. Because we had the right candidate in here. But we didn't go vote. Y'all ain't going to say nothing now. Don't get quiet now. But you didn't vote. Oh, I forgot. Oh, I meant to vote. But I didn't vote. So we had a Mr. Trump for four years who changed all the laws. And now, even if you have money, I was talking to our accountant. She said, my engine went out on my car. So I went to my credit union and got $49,000 out of my credit union and the car company wouldn't accept it. Y'all ain't gonna say nothing to me. And I said, what do you mean? He said, no. They said, now you have to go back and get a letter, not just from the credit union, that this is where the funds came from, but where did the funds come from to go in the credit union. Am I right, Sister Ruthie? That now the laws have changed. You can't even buy your house cash with your own money. They have to find out where that money came from and they have to go back and seek the source of it. You can't even buy a car for cash with your own money. They wanna see a bank statement where the money came out of. They got so tight that they wanted to see where, what bank account did you get the money for the appraisal, for the earnest deposit. I showed them the account. They said, but where did it come from? Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. So I had to go to the bank and the bank had to contact, had to pull up all my deposit slips to be able to see where that amount of money was coming in from my account. But you want the house. So I can't get mad. I can't get an attitude. I can't just cuss them out. No, because faith now demands a corresponding action. They don't care nothing about your money now. They want to know where it came from. They want to, that was for us. Hello, somebody. That was for us. Point to your hand, yourself. Say, that was for us. And now you can't buy a house if you haven't filed your taxes. You got to be up to date with the filing of your taxes. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Because they have changed the laws. They didn't do that for the rich and the wealthy. Because we know a certain person never filed taxes. We know a certain person never showed their taxes. So that ain't for the rich and the wealthy. That's for middle class and lower class. What am I telling you? I'm telling you that your faith is going to require more work. I'm telling you that the things that God has promised you, you can get it, but you're going to have to work. You're going to have to put some work with your faith. And the way that the laws are changing, you may have to put more work in than what you desire. Why? Because the laws have changed. But if you follow your faith and you follow the pattern of your faith, you will get the results. But you're going to have to put the work in. When I prayed and I still didn't get it, prayer, I'm not talking about prayer. This is more powerful than prayer. Action. 
Go to, go to 2 Peter for just a moment, and I'm going to close it because I don't want to strain my voice too much. But how many of you are understanding this word? How many of you are going through an extreme faith makeover? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse number three of 2 Peter Say, by his divine power, God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. I'm in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. We have received everything we need for living a godly life. We have received all of this by coming to know him the one who called us to himself by means of his marvelous glory and excellence. And because of his glory and excellence, he has given us great and precious promises. And these promises that ye might be partakers of the divine nature, escaping the corruption that is in the world by lust. Now, add to your faith. Come on here. Add to your faith. Somebody say, add to your faith. Add to, faith. Add to your faith. The first thing, the, the New Living Translation says, in effort, in every effort to respond to God's promises, you must supplement your faith or you must add to your faith a generous provision of virtue or moral excellence you must add knowledge you must add self control you must add patience you must add godliness and you must add brotherly love. Wow. So now I want these promises in my life. How many of you want these promises? Now the promises are given to us for everything we need in life and godliness. Say this with me. God's promises are for me. To have everything I need in life and in godliness. Say it with me one more time. God's promises are given to me that I may have everything. Say it again, everything that I need for life and godliness. One more time. These promises that come from God are so that I, can have everything that I need for life and godliness. How many of you believe that? He says, now, if you want these promises to be manifested in your life, you must supplement your faith. Good God Almighty. Y'all better be glad I ain't got my good voice. Because I can holler right there. Somebody holler for me right there. You got to add to your faith. How do you even know that as good as a butter cake is, you need more than butter? You got to what? Add sugar. You got to add flavor. You got to add some substance, whether it's I hate almond flour. I just hate it. I try to like it, but I don't like it. Coconut flour, I, I'm good with that. Regular flour, I'm good with that. But you got to have some kind of binding. You need an egg. You're going to need some eggs. You need a pinch of salt. I don't care what you're cooking. Stop making sweet potato pies without a pinch of salt. Just stop. Stop making candy yams without a pinch of salt. It ain't all sugar and it ain't all butter. You need a pinch of salt. Yams, okay, why am I cooking? Why, why am I teaching cooking right now? I, I slipped out, I slipped out. 
That pound cake is sweet, but it ain't got that pinch of salt. It's not balanced. You got to put that pinch of salt in there. You got to add it. The yams are the yams, but if you want sweet potatoes, you have to add. Get you some sea salt, roll it in the potato and oil, wrap it in some, in some tin foil, slip it in the oven. And when it come out, eat the peel. Eat the whole thing. Add a little, little cinnamon to it. Come on, a little butter. Add a little, oh, Shonda, a little maple syrup. Come on, a little agave or whatever your sweetener is. You got to add. You want to make a cake, you got to add. You got to add to your faith. You know what we've done? We stopped at baby faith. We haven't added to our faith. Now it says you have to add virtue. That's moral excellence. I don't care how much faith you have. You have to supplement your faith with some integrity. Tell the truth. Stop lying. Pay your bills on time. Get a good credit score. Stop ducking and dodging. Be on time. Show up. Prepared, ready. Add to your faith. You want a multi-million dollar business? Then show up. Show up like you're already a millionaire. Add to your faith. Moral excellence. Moral integrity. Add to your faith. Diligence. What is that? That's endurance. Long suffering. A realtor called me the other day. Bishop Coletta. I said, yes, baby. She says, the seller says this and the seller says that. I said, okay. Tell the seller, I said, he got to wait. Because I'm waiting. Every step that you take in this process of getting the bank's money is a waiting game. Because you got to call somebody else and they got to call somebody else and they got to call somebody else and you got to wait. But we need to know where this amount of money came in your account. What? Back in June? I don't even remember last week. Back in June? So you got to now go to the bank. They got to pull up your deposits. They don't just want your bank account. They want to see your deposits. And now your deposits are digital. So that means you don't have a record of it unless you're looking at your bank statement. But now you don't get it on paper anymore. Now, come on. So everything is a waiting game. So you have to add patience to your faith. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter number 6, and I won't go there, but around verse 11, it says, by faith, and patience they obtained the promises you gotta add patience to your faith you gotta add patience you have to endure some stuff you have to go through some stuff and never compromise your integrity James said add brotherly kindness to your faith that while you are going through the test of faith, don't be a jerk. Wow. Repeat after me. Say, I, I shall not be, shall not be a, jerk. a jerk. You know how many times you run into people and because they've been waiting on the Lord, they have turned into jerks. They have turned into mean people. Waiting on the Lord to conceive, waiting on the Lord to be married, waiting on the Lord to get your home or to get whatever it is that you're believing God for, have a multi-million dollar business, build your clientele, whatever it is. But in the process, don't become a jerk. Don't start being mean-spirited. Add to your faith kindness. 
I'm waiting on the Lord, but I'm still kind. I'm waiting on the Lord, but I'm still a nice person. I'm waiting on the Lord, and I'm still a patient person. That my faith does not agitate you. Just because I'm waiting, I should not be rude. Just because I'm waiting on the Lord, I should not be classless. I'm waiting on God, but I added to my faith kindness. Oh, I'm teaching better than you shout. Y'all got a good voice. You should be hollering by now. Hallelujah. I don't have a voice. You should be shouting by now. Add. Somebody say add to my faith virtue, add to my faith, moral character, add to my faith, integrity, add to my faith, endurance, add to my faith, patience, add to my faith, kindness. Notice what the next verse says. The more you grow like this, the more productive and useful you will be in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. I want my faith to produce. I don't just want faith for faith's sake. I was talking to Elder Ladia. Thank you for the yes. And she was, she's in one of our programs in the district to become a certified teacher. She was sharing a testimony with me the other day that when she first came to this church, she could barely walk. She could barely stand up. She could barely walk up the stairs. She was on disability. She hadn't worked for years. And I said, Elder, you're too smart to be at home on disability. She's a brilliant mind. I said, you're too smart. I didn't know that lady. I didn't know her. I didn't have the kind of intimate relationship that I should be saying that to her, but by the spirit. Now she has almost finished her master's degree. She had a high school diploma when she came. She had a high school diploma when she came. She has almost completed her, okay, let me explain it. After high school comes a bachelor's degree, at least an associate's. Now, if you go to a four-year program, you don't need an associate's. But if you go to a two-year program, you need an associate's. She went to a four-year program, got her bachelor's degree. I said, Elder, keep going. She applied and got accepted in a master's program. She is a few hours from graduating with her master's degree. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why? Because faith without works is dead. She was complaining about not having enough money. Not, I said, well, what do you like? What do you want to do? And then she applied to DPSCD. Got the job. It's hot. Listen, her name buzzes throughout the district. Principals want her in their school. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? And I said to her, so we have a program now where you can get certified as a teacher. 
I said, I want you in this program, Ladia. She got in the program. She took the test, and she didn't pass the test. And she said, I'm getting out. I said, oh. oh. Elder Nettie, you got to train her. You got to teach her. She, see, you know me. I said, you said what? I'm not going to. I said, ah. I said, what you going to? I said, what was your score? What was it, Elder? 204. And what does it take to pass? That's 16 points. <laughs> get, get, a, get a cheat. Get a cheat. I said, wait a minute. Everybody get ready to get you. Everybody get ready to get you now. Those of you online, put it in the chat. I said, you're going to take that test again. The same test. And you're going to take it until you pass. From 206 to, what is 204? 220? It's just three more nights of study. And the principal said, if you don't get your well, back... <laughs> The principals, come on, principals, talk to her. Come on, principals, I got principals in here. You're going to take that test, and you're going to be a certified teacher. And when you finish your master's, we're going to talk about that doctorate. Y'all ain't saying nothing up in here. But I see her faith. Now, in the process, she got up out the bed. In the process, she got out of pain. She got out of a bad marriage. She got out of bad situations where she was medicated day and night. She can beat me up these steps. And last week, she stopped me. She said, you know, before I came here, I had scoliosis, which is a curvature of the spine. She said, but Bishop, I looked. And my spine has straightened up. Walk around here, Elder, Elder Ladia, with your fine self. Come on here. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Keep praising God. Walk up here to the front, baby. Hallelujah. She said, I'm sitting straight in the chairs. Come on, keep clapping. I want you to see her faith. I want you to see her faith. I want you to see her faith. Come on. Come on, praise God. And I looked at her back. There's no curvature on her back. She was hit with an accident. It wasn't birthed, but by her faith, she was not working on the back. She wasn't working on the back, but by patience and obedience in the process of getting out of the financial situation, getting a degree, almost her second degree, Working at the DPSCD, taking the test for certification, becoming a school teacher, soon a vice principal. Are you listening to me? God healed her back. Why? He saw her faith. He saw her faith. He saw her faith. And when God sees your faith, you get your miracle. Come on and clap your hands. Stand on your feet. Oh, come on, somebody. Come on and praise God. Come on and praise God. Bold faith. Bold prayers. But bold action. Could it be that the reason we are not seeing 
the miracles in our lives is because we have not added action to our faith. Or maybe we added action, but we got weary along the way. Or maybe they aggravated us so badly and got on our nerves. Come on, Rush, run, that we just threw up our hands and got out of the faith fight. You can't keep doing what you're doing and expect different results. Faith is both a now and a verb. When my sister said what she said, it shocked me. I never expected that. My sister knows me better than any living person. When you sleep in the same bed and come from the same folks, you know the same language. My Children say, y'all two y'all the same people in two different bodies. Because it's all we know. I know my sister. My sister knows me. It's eight years apart, but she knows me better than any human being. If my mom and dad were here, they would, but she knows me better. She was put in my room and stole my clothes. I signed all her excuses in my mama's name. Every time she got ready to get in trouble, I went to the school. So I know my sister and my sister knows me. But what shocked and surprised me is she said the one thing that we know about my sister, your bishop, is her faith. That got me. I don't know what I may have expected, but that's the greatest, that's the greatest celebration and accolade that I would want. Because Jesus says, when I come back to the earth, will I find your faith? Will I find your faith? Now, not, not your prayers, not your giving, not, not your church attendance, but will I find faith in the earth? Woman, thy faith has made thee whole. Do you want to see? He said, I want to see. He said, now, I'm going to put this spit on your eyes. Ten lepers. We want to be healed. Yes, we want to be healed. Go show yourself to the priest. There is always going to be a corresponding action. Abraham, you believe me? I believe you. Take your son, your only child, and sacrifice him to me. I just got him, God. I waited 25 years. He said, take him up and make him a sacrifice unto me. There will never be a requirement from the Lord of your faith where you will say yes to God and then sit down. You want to be a nurse? Got to go to nursing school. At the nursing school, you got to pass your boards. You want to be a caterer? Good. You might be the best cook in the kitchen, but it's going to take more than that for you to be a million-dollar chef. You do hair well, but it's going to take more then you're doing a hair well to become a sought after 
salon owner. You're going to have to do more with what you have if you're praying bold prayers. If you're praying bold prayers, you're going to have to put some work in it. I need somebody who will go and redeem them from their sins. Jesus said, prepare me a body. And I will go in the volume of the book. It wasn't enough that God so loved the world. For we would still, Brother Dove, be in our sins. But he sent his only begotten son. It's not enough that you love God. You have got to put some work in. He said, if you give me a body, I'll go down and I'll do the work. John 17, Jesus was praying the high priestly prayer and he says to the Father, I have finished the work that you gave me to do. Now glorify me as you did in the beginning. When he was dying on the cross, he said, it is finished. What is finished? The work. The work. I did the work of salvation. I didn't just show up. I did the work. I finished the assignment. Paul said, I fought a good fight, kept the faith, but I finished the work. There is something called anointing. And you can just glisten in the glow of God. But that anointing has been given to you to go to work. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. That's wonderful. And he has anointed me to do what? Work. <laughs> to heal those that are brokenhearted. To open the eyes of the blind. To lift the burden off the oppressed. And to declare the acceptable year of the Lord. I'm not just anointed. I'm working. Bold faith. Bold prayers. Bold action. Without actions, your faith is unseen. Without actions, your work, without work, without actions, your faith is invisible. It's just in your heart. For with the heart, you must believe. But after you Add to your faith corresponding action. Oh, I sure wish our church would grow. <laughs> Who do you think is going to do it? Where's all the people? But how many people did you invite to come to church with you today? How many people?
people have you engaged to watch our lives? You believe God for 3,000. But how many of those 3,000 are you going to be responsible for? You do well, old man, because you say that you believe. James says, even the demons believe and tremble. The devil believes God. But his works are not corresponding to his faith. His works are opposite. His works are contrary to what he believes. Are our works contrary to what we believe? I believe God for global revival. I believe God for the outpouring of Holy Spirit on all the land. I believe God. What are my corresponding? the work in and I study and when I felt like I had run out of information I enrolled in another school while I'm already working on a PhD I enrolled in another school so that I could get more credible sources on the Holy Spirit while I'm already in school I enrolled in another school I want you to see my faith. I don't just get up and Google every morning. But every one hour demands four hours of preparation. Obtaining faith is easy. Maintaining it is not. Lift your hands and say, Lord, help me to believe and to apply corresponding action to what I believe. Give God praise. Hallelujah. How many of you received this word? Were you able to hear it in spite of? Father, we thank you today in the name of Jesus. Let's pray in the spirit. We pray now, God, that we are not just hearers of the word, but that we are doers of the word. I pray, oh God, in the name of Jesus, that we are doers of the word. Where we have need, where we have lack, where we come up short, I pray now, God, that we will examine to see where we are in our faith. And if we need to add or supplement our faith, then Holy Spirit, we ask you to anoint us for the long haul. Give me, God, the grace to do what it is to run this race that I might not run in vain. Father, in the name of Jesus, as your people are listening and hearing, God, the word of faith, I pray that faith comes alive in them as never before. That God, whatever they have done to put their faith on the shelf, to put their, sh their faith in the layaway, to put their faith in hiding, that today, God, your word will penetrate and their, their word will go down into the marrow of their bones uh, and that your word, God, will bring forth uh, a manifestation uh, of faith and corresponding actions. Uh, many of them are believing you for things. They have things and petitions before you. And it is your desire, God, that you would give unto them the kingdom. But their faith fall short. Their actions fall short. So today, God, in the name of Jesus, strengthen their faith and strengthen their actions so that the promises that you have given us shall be manifested in their lives in the mighty name of Jesus.
Jesus. I come against fear. I come against laziness. I come against inconsistency. I come against apathy. And God in Jesus name. I call for faith. A faith that endures. A faith that wars. A faith that wins. A faith that prevails. In tough times. In the name of Jesus, thank you for extreme faith. Open your mouth. Pray in the Holy Spirit. I need faith that can conquer anything. My vocabulary needs to change. My thought life needs to change. I need to upgrade my thinking, uh, upgrade my actions, uh, upgrade my responses uh, so that you can see my faith. Uh, I want my faith to come out uh, of the invisible world uh, and come into the visible realm uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, faith that can be marked, uh, faith that can be duplicated and copied, uh, faith that can be seen, uh, faith that can be emulated, uh, faith over God that can conquer, uh, faith that doesn't shrink, uh, faith that doesn't bow, uh, faith that doesn't give up, uh, oh God, my age is not the problem, uh, my gender is not the problem, uh, my color is not the problem, uh, my ethnicity is not the problem, uh, my actions are the problem, uh, oh God, uh, strengthen my faith uh, and strengthen my actions. In the name of Jesus, that you might see my faith and be glorified. That my faith will make me whole. Hallelujah. That my faith will make my finances whole. My faith will make my body whole. My faith will make my marriage whole. My faith will make my relationships whole. My faith will make my church whole. My faith. God, I thank you. In the name of Jesus, my faith will open doors. My faith will make connections. My faith will give favor. My faith, my faith, my faith, my faith, my faith will pass the test. My faith will help me graduate. My faith will help me write the dissertation. My faith will help me get that degree. My faith uh, will help me live in a new house. Uh, my faith, my faith, my faith, my faith, my faith will make hell shake. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Don't ever think that the devil does not know your faith. Don't ever think that the devil doesn't know where you collapse. Don't ever think that the devil doesn't know how to get you out of faith. He knows what buttons to push to get you out of character. Don't ever think that the devil is not watching your faith. I hear that in the spirit. The devil is watching. If God is watching my faith, then the devil is watching my faith. I'm listening to the scriptures play in the back of my, my head. When those seven sons of Siva tried to cast out a devil. In the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches, come out. I 
just heard this. And they say it. We know Paul. Don't think the devil doesn't know your faith. Paul, I know. Jesus, I know. But your faith has not been recorded here. I just heard that. If God knows your faith, then the devil knows your faith. Coletta, I know. Idahosa, I know. Lewis, I know. I'm standing in his faith. We're dwelling in his faith. Your faith is not recorded here yet. If God sees your faith, then the devil sees your faith. Corresponding actions. My father said, the Lord told me to start a church. Daddy, what are you saying? He said, the Lord says, start a church and name it Holy Ghost. When you leave this building today, go out the front and look on the building. God sees his faith. Every day, every day, people drive by. This is not my faith. This is the faith of my father. You see how long faith lasts? Daddy been gone for years, but his faith is still in the earth. When you drive down 1745 East Grand Boulevard, you see the faith of Henry Lewis on the front of this building. What did, what did it say? Holy Ghost. That was his faith. My mother said, I'm going to max out all my credit cards. I'm going to buy a bus. We're going to buy this building. That building is gone. I drove by there the other day. It's empty. But his faith is still here. Hell knows my daddy's faith. Hell knows my mother's faith. Thank you, Daddy, for your faith. Come on and praise God for faith that remains. Praise God for faith that doesn't die when your body dies. Faith of a mother. Thank you, Mother Lewis. Thank you for your faith. She took on a second job to help pay for that building. That's what faith does. I hope I can preach a little bit stronger next week. Thank you. Paul, we know. Henry, we know. Jesse, we know. We know that crazy clutter. If God can see your faith, the devil can too. I want to know what do you think your faith looks like? right now what do you think your faith looks like to hell what do you think Loretta came to me last week she said I need, a, I need 50 signs 
I said, what? She said, I need 50 signs. I said, okay. So I said, Brother Daryl, what's his new name? <laughs> I said, Johnson, bring me them signs. <laughs> we put them signs together. I don't know how Loretta Ragsdale and Alfred do it. But all this week, as I drove through the city, I see my sign. I don't see nobody else's signs for school board yet. She said, I need 50 signs. Wow. Father, we thank you for bold faith. As we get ready to leave this place today, I thank you, God, that we are a people who not only hear the word, but we are doers of the word. This week, as we have prayed bold prayers, remind us afresh of the bold actions that now must be corresponding. I thank you. I thank you, Lord, for the people who have come to hear the word because they want a makeover of their faith. God, thank you for honoring my faith today. And you have given me the grace to share your word. Now let the blood of Jesus be traction to our tires. Let the angels of the Lord go before us and the great host of heaven come behind us and be our rear guard. And now let the Holy Spirit watch over us and protect us from hurt, harm, and danger. No accidents, no incidents, no vehicle malfunction. We shall arrive to our destinations safely. And when we arrive, we will find that our homes are safe as well. No pestilence and no famine has come nigh our dwelling. And we thank you that we shall hear this word over and over again in our spirit. And we will move from believing to action. In the mighty name of Jesus, keep us in your grip and in your gaze until we meet again. Before you leave today, I want to make sure that there's no one here that does not know Jesus Christ in the pardon of their sins. I want to make sure that those of you that are online, that you know Jesus as your Savior. I want to make sure that you are able to not only live in the earth well, but to live in the afterlife well. And you can do that by making Jesus Savior and Lord of your life. Repeat after me, everybody, Lord Jesus, I desire you as my Savior. Come into my heart. Be my Savior and Lord in the name of Jesus. I accept the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ as my faith. Fill me with your Holy Spirit that I may live this life until you call me home. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, you've just given your life to the Lord. Type it in the text if you would that I just prayed that prayer. If you're here today, this was your first time ever praying that prayer of faith. We're here ready that you might come to know Christ in a deep and rich way and that you will be filled with his Holy Spirit. I can't let you go until we do that. All is well. All is well. God bless you. Have a great week. The peace of the Lord is with you.
please don't forget your Franken move flyers. See Sister Eladia for the flyers. Don't forget our snack table. And don't forget your assessments. Don't forget your anniversary assessments. Please, let's get this in and get it done. We got great things in store. In Jesus' name, amen. Turn around and pray for somebody else. Just give up. 